Yes, thank y'all for coming back for Where My Killer Tape At, episode 85. Um, I'm going to be doing a review on the new Gangstar album, um, one of the best yet. I'm going to talk about the 20th anniversary of MF Doom's Operation Doomsday. Yeah, I know we old, and I missed that by two months. Um, I'm going to talk about why we shouldn't raise fuckboys. We're also going to bring back level one wokeness again. Um, and you know I got to talk about your boy Clifford, a.k.a. T.I. Y'all know I do. Let's get it. Tape at B for episode 85. Uh, once again, doing wine. I'm doing uh, 30 Birds uh, Red Blend. Uh, it's a full body dry. It's sweet as fuck though. I usually don't do wines that are that sweet, but it's actually pretty good. It's not like it's not like sweet where you feel it in your bones. I'm an old man, but yeah, I'm definitely drinking on that. Um, hopefully next week I go to my hot toddies. And Flirty Bird is that's the name of the company. Or I've talked about this before, um, and, and look, I try not to tell people what to do. Um, corporal punishment doesn't work on kids, first of all, but I, I try not, again, I try not to, I don't get in people's business. Um, so that being said, you shouldn't get in mine. And what I mean by that is don't post yourself abusing your kids on online. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't fucking do that. Like, um, it's a quick way for you to get a phone call from CPS and child services and um, your kids get taken away from you. Um, and you made you look like a dang fool. And for some of you, you might even get jail time. So don't do it. But just to let you know, corporal punishment is abuse. And, and I don't know. I know, like, um, I talk to a lot of people about this. There's a lot of people, a lot of parents that do what's called posture, posturing. They don't really parent, right? They like to just huff their chest out and be like, oh, I'm a good parent. I don't let that go down in my house because I run the house. And da -da -da -da. it's posturing. It's, it, we do it all the time, right? Um, and But parents do it the worst. So and it's one of those things where no one wants to be called a bad parent, right? So if you're at work and, and somebody's like, you know, my kid is getting bad grades. Someone is always like, oh, not in my house. Da -da 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 -da. You know, like he's trying to hit all that shit for real, for real. So like, don't do that. Um, it's abuse. It's, it's abuse. And it's and it's mental and emotional when you post that online, um, you know, because the child has to see that. The child has to hear about that. Those, those children are going to always hear about that. They're going to always be known as that kid that was beat online. And that shit is not cool. It really, really, really isn't cool. So don't do that, man. Just, just stop doing it. Um, <clears throat> and then it puts us in this. It puts us in a situation because um, some of us are gonna report y'all. Just, you know, that's it's gonna happen. Um, I'm not saying that I did it, but I know that if if it got a million views, someone reported you. You know what I mean? Really, if you got if you got a thousand views, somebody reported you. So don't do it. Um, I, I don't think people are doing it for clout. I know necessarily so. I just know that people do it all the time. People talk about what they do to their kids uh, when they get a, a bad grade or what they do to their kids when they don't clean their room and they brag about that shit and that shit is not cool. But it puts us all in the situation because we either like, should we let them slide? Should we inform on them? Um, I know as an, as an educator, like I really like really think about those things. I really, really do because I know that if I inform, that child will be put in the system. And that's why you don't want to do that stuff. So please, please be careful. Don't do it, man. Just word is born. There's other ways of doing it, man. Word. You know, for those of you that heard about your boy Clifford, a.k.a. T.I., um, bruh, like, on so many levels, like, wow, like, it's, it's, let's not even get into the legalities of what he did to his daughter. Let's not even get into that. Um, 
just the fact that he said he wanted to go to with her to the GYN to make sure her hymen um, is not damaged. And that statement right there, number one, is creepy. Number two, um, you're violating your daughter's privacy. Number three, um, you're violating her agency. Like, that is her body. It's not your body. Your daughter's body is not your property. Um, and the idea that um, when a young when a young woman is no longer a virgin, oh, I hate using that term, right? When when a young lady has a has sex, that her hyphen is hymen, excuse me, excuse me, her hymen is damaged is mythology at best. Um, and it, it, it and the, that idea, I know that idea comes from um, you know the concept of marriage where the the, the property of, from the father is transferred over to the husband, and the way that is um consummated is if you know if when he has when the husband has sex with his new wife that um her hymen is undamaged like that's how he knows that that he didn't get quote unquote damaged goods oh it sounds crazy coming out of my mouth but that's where that comes from i've heard people talk about that and people actually to this day like still like believe that that shit is true and that that's how it should be um and the part that hurts the most is the people that are co-signing uh ti about that and you know the thing about ti is that there's two things wrong with ti number one is that he's level one woke and he's been level one woke for like 10 years now and he hasn't moved beyond that i'm gonna talk about that later level two the n number two the situation is that he he proclaims himself to be a leader in the black community like he's said it out of his mouth like i'm a leader of the black in the black community uh, he said that um and that's like the dangerous part about it is that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about um, and I'm going to talk about that celebrities and wokeness too as well, but it's really like on so many levels, uh, misogynistic it's, it's again, your, your daughter is not your property. Um, um, my daughter, your daughter, you know, her, what she does with her body has nothing to do with the way you raise them. That's their, it's their agency, right? They do. That's their body. It's not yours. It doesn't. You know, is she sleeping with five guys does have no bearing on your on your upbringing at all. You know, what I mean, it doesn't make her less than human if she's doing that. She's a human being. And if she likes to sleep with five guys, she likes to sleep with five guys. You know, that's just how it is. Um, men do it all the time and we don't say nothing. Right? We actually give them props. And what makes what makes T.I. worse is that when his 15 year old son um, had sex for the first time, he celebrated that. And, and it'd be different if he was like, well, none of my kids are gonna have sex until they get married and he did if he applied that to all his kids it it wouldn't be so bad but it's it's a it's a double standard it's sexist is creepy to be quite honest as well like that is creepy like there's a reason why i never did father daughter dances because i just felt like they would say they were just so creepy and you know some people think that shit is cool and you know no judgment i just think that it's creepy but wow ti like this is a new low for you man come on man <laughs> And, and let me just say this, man, like, because this needs to be said, right? The best way to create a world where rape culture doesn't thrive, where misogyny doesn't reign supreme and sexism is the law of the land is to not raise fuckboys. That's like, I'm not saying that's the only way, right? But it's this one way. And it's, it's like, we always tell our women and our daughters and our sisters and our aunties and our friends, you know what I mean? And our mentees, we always tell them, choose better men. But how are they gonna choose better men if we continue to raise fuckboys? That doesn't. That just doesn't add up. Like you, we always say that. That's always the advice that we give. Yo, we need to be better fathers to our boys, man. We need to raise them right. Like for real, for real. Like how can, like that shit don't make no fucking sense. Like I hear a lot of men say, "Well, I want my daughters to get caught up in the shit that I did to women." Then don't raise your boys to be like that. That's how you fix that. Like and stop being that way. Stop being trash to women. Like that's how you fix that shit. Like. I don't, and I don't hear that a lot when it comes to parenting. You know, like we always say, you know, oh, women pick better men. You know, women do this, women do that. Women learn this kind of protection. Women, like the other day I saw online uh, uh, a, cup, a condom cup. Yeah, it's like a condom you put over your cup, you know, so when, when the women go out to drink so that nobody will slip them a Mickey or whatever, then they shit. And I, or roofie, roofie is what they call it, right? They don't slip them a roofie or a drug and they drink, right? Which is fucked up, first of all, like. Who, who the fuck goes out and puts stuff in women's drinks? Like, you know, fucking assholes. You fuck, fucking, I don't know. Ugh, it gets on my nerves. But anyway, someone is selling this this rubber thing that you put over 
your cup when you're out. Women put over their cup and they drink and they can just bust a straw through it. And it's called a condom cup. And it's just like, or a cup condom, something like that. And I'm just like, we don't have to do all that if we just teach men not to do that. Say, hey, you can't do that shit. Like, don't do that. Like, tell your boys to don't do that. And then when you go out with the fellas and they doing that shit, you should be like, hey, man, what are you doing, man? I should report you to the police for that stuff. That's You wouldn't want nobody doing that to you. So it's like, you know what I mean? So like, we got to just stop raising fuck boys, man. That's how you do that, man. For real, for real. I got to do a whole episode on that. I got this this um idea from T with Queen and Jay um, that podcast they're really dope. If you're not listening to them, we can't be friends. Um, and they talk about how people come into consciousness. They call them level one woke. So I got that idea from them. So I don't want to make it seem like I just made that shit up. So if you use it, make sure you big them up for that. Anyway, um, I, I know I'm gonna talk about Ti, but I just want to talk about people who are level one woke uh, because you know, I mean, there's levels to it, right? There's levels to wokeness, and I think that you know. When you have like new acolytes, right? You got brand people. Ne excuse me, neophytes. That's what you want to say, neophytes. Whether they whether they somebody that's just converted to Christianity or someone who has found a new vegan diet, they're usually like zealots, right? They're usually out there in your face, letting you know. Um, a lot of times, a lot, most of the time, because I have yet to meet a neophyte who actually gave like proper information. They usually give you hearsay and bullshit. Um, and um, pseudo histories about things things they really don't know nothing about. Uh, unfortunately, you know, most people stay in that level one wokeness. Like, they never go past that, which fucking sucks, right? You can be, I know people who've done that 20 years, has been on the same level, never elevated, and that shit sucks. And I think that's probably the worst ones out there. But everybody kind of goes through it. I know I went through it where I was just running my fucking mouth. I didn't know what I was doing. But, because when I hear when I hear people say stuff like, remember I told you on that one episode where I was like, I believe that black women didn't have periods until slavery. Like I, be, I sincerely believe that, right? At one time, I really I was running around saying that shit, and um, so I'm not saying oh be patient with people like that. Like, let's ignore the motherfuckers, man. And you know, unless they violate your your space or your area, you know, unless they fucking with you, then you definitely let, definitely let them know. But there's a lot of y'all that are level one woke. And y'all need to move, either, either level up or get the fuck out. Do one of those things. Word. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of, of Guru, uh, the late great Guru. Rest in peace, man. Rest in power. Word is born to the late great Guru. Um, I'm a huge fan of Gangstar. I love DJ Premier. Um, as a teen, they were just one of the best yet, you know what I mean? Um, and that's the name of their latest album, One of the Best Yet, um, which is freaking dope. Um, didn't think it was going to happen because of that one individual whose name shall not be named, the, 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 the epitome of a hip-hop villain. Uh, but anyway, they released an album about a week ago. And let me just say this, man. It, it's like a time machine. It took me right back to the 90s, man. Like They even got a Militia Part 4, you know what I mean, with Freddie Fox and Big Shook. So that, that, I was just happy to have that shit there. It was just, every time I listen to the album, man, I think about a lot of shit. But the first single, um, uh, that they, they have a, they have two videos for it. Uh, and, and it features Guru's son in there. Uh, but the first video, um, I try to remember the name of that song. I know they got a video for the, for the song Bad Name, which is freaking dope. Um, I hate giving good people bad news. I've been playing that like all week. And it's just, again, I know that. For us old heads, we reminisce about the 90s boom bat, which a lot of people are trying to bring back. But um, I, it's just a dope album. And just one thing I liked about Guru was that no gimmicks. He just never had no gimmicks. He just had straight, straight rhymes. And it's just like, you know, wow. It's just, you know, the Gangstar Foundation is on here. And it's just amazing. Anyway, the song is called um, Family and Loyalty. And that one has J. Cole on it in the video as well. And J. Cole, like, I, I love when, like, new artists... Well, J. Cole's not a new artist, but a younger artist gets to the older head and they, they, they bars level up. Like, they bars just level the fuck up and he levels up his bars. Anyway, one of my favorite songs called was Take Flight, which was a Militia Part 4. Um, but um, Family and Loyalty, of course. And then What's Real, and that has Royce the 5'9", who fucking slaughters. Yo, yo, honestly, to me, in my opinion, Royce the 5'9 is the best rapper to come out of Detroit. I'm, I'll fight anybody in the street for that. 
Um, and then that bad name joint, which is really dope. And then, of course, he got MOP on there for Lights Out, which what, what I love about MOP is the level of energy they bring to any song. And you would think that, because, you know, Guru is like more laid back. He get, you know, his rhyme style is like laid back. This is how he is. He really, you know, with Guru, you can hear all his lines. You know what I mean? You can hear all of them. And he's just the way he flows. No one, no one has ever flowed like him. But anyway, MOP matches that energy. And I thought that was a really dope. Dope joint. But anyway, it's it's a dope album. It's typical Gangstar. If you're used to it, um, the you know, the, the star and the chain, that's just, it's just typical stuff. And that's what I always loved about them. They were consistent. They just gave you consistent, dope shit. Premier comes in with the scratches. Man, it's, it's pure nostalgia. And, you know, if you want to introduce somebody to them, I think this is the album to do it. Because um, it'll make them go back and listen to their previous catalog. But Gangstar's rhymes, I don't know how old these rhymes are. But they sound like he wrote them yesterday. So, word is born. Rest in peace to Guru. Thank you, Premier. Word is born. We love y'all, man. Check out the Gangsta album. I'm super late on this one, but um, two months ago was a 20th anniversary of the release of Operation Doomsday, which originally was released on Father Them Records. Uh, shout out to Bobito Garcia. That was his record label. Oh. And that, of course, is the debut studio album by MF Doom. Um, I've always been a fan of MF Doom um, when he was part of a group called uh, um, KMD Causing Much Damage. And they were like a, 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 pro, a you know black liberation, what some people call conscious hip hop rap group that came in the tail end of that of that time. Right. We're talking about like. Like it was like 88 to 92, where a lot of people was at, quote unquote Afrocentric. They were, um, they were, you know, Black Liberation. Uh, they were what people call conscious rap, and they came in the tail end of that. Um, and there was a, there were three of them. It was his brother, and I think it was his cousin. It was Sub Rock and his and his um and his brother. Um, and um, really dope, really dope album. Um, they they actually they released KMD the first album, and then they released a second album that got dropped. It got dropped. It actually never got released. They got dropped from their label. During the Cop Killer incident with Ice-T, a lot of labels were dropping certain um, um, artists back then because of that fiasco. And they're the one of the people that got where I caught up in that. But anyway, it's a dope joint. Um, you know, at that time when he was in KMD, he, he was known as Sev Love X. And, um, you know, he released, he became, he became MF Doom and he wore like this mask that kind of looks like um dr doom from marvel but it not technically isn't because it's missing the lower jaw part of it and it has these two pieces that come out that are almost like fangs but they're not um uh, but he he, he rhymed as that um and one of my favorite tracks of course on that album uh, there was two things that i loved about the album he sampled a lot of the dialogue from dr doom from the fantastic four cartoon series back in the day Marvel had a series. It was like it came out. It was like a half hour show. It had Captain America, Iron Man, which Ghostface um, actually um, sampled the, the theme song for the Iron Man joint uh, for his album. And it had Fantastic Four as well, Captain America, and then it had the Hulk as well as Iron Man. So he sampled some of the dialogue from there, and it's really dope how he puts it in there. Anyway, my favorite joint, of course, is Doomsday featuring Pebbles, the Invisible Girl. Uh, Cause she sounds like Sade, and he, he does he does sample Sade on that joint, of course. Um, and I mean, there's just so many joints on there. Gas draws is dope. Uh, question mark featuring Curious, um, which man, he should have released another album after that. Um, the Posse Cut, Who Do You Think I Am? Um, it's just and you know, rhymes like dives. Like that's my shit right there. Like it, it's there's so many joints on there that you could play over. It got re-released in 2011. No, no, it got released in a, in, in a 2000. 2001 i believe and then it got re-released again in um in 2010 was it something like that but it was 2001 on a different label and then it got released in 2011 and then somebody did a remaster of 2015 it really is a classic joint and and he continued to put out dope material after that i mean just a dope body of work uh but it's it'll always be one of my favorite mf dooms album um man I, and it makes me feel old but i know like um my oldest sons, they really got hip to him. They enjoy him. I always tell young people that like Boom Bap, I'll be like, hey, check this album out. It's really dope. Um, and I, I know now there's a lot of people that are, the reason why this album is revisited a lot is because of geek culture now. 
is pretty much, you know, mainstream culture. So I guess that's what that is. And for me, it's nostalgic as fuck. So shout out to MF Doom, who I've seen him perform as Zebel of X, but I've never seen him, seen him perform as um, MF Doom. Work. Here we go for episode 85. We have mad shout outs. First of all, shout out to the homie Balan. I see you doing your thing with the Utes. The Ute Dems, right? Shout out to the Circle Nerds, man. I love y'all and I miss y'all. We're going to get the, the band back together, though. Uh, shout out to the homie Taekwon of, of MZK. He's the vice president of MZK. Y'all know who they are. Um, he's in India right now doing his thing. Thizzle. Shout out to the all MZK Massive, man. I love y'all and I miss y'all, too. Word. <laughs> Once again, party people, another episode of Where My Killer Tape At. I want to thank everybody for really checking us out, man. Love y'all. I get a lot of comments. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people um, send me DMs and they tell me how much they love the show, how, love, how much they love my voice. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Do me a solid, man. Do me a solid, y'all. Um, this is the dope part about podcasting. Like, they look at subscription numbers, right? So what I want you to do is... I want you to talk to your co-worker. I want you to talk. Well, maybe not your co-worker because I don't want you to get fired for listening to me. But talk to your peoples. Talk to your mans. Talk to your women's. You know what I mean? And say, yo, do me a favor. Subscribe to my man's podcast. I'm on, you know, um, Apple's. What's that called? Apple Podcasts. I'm on Google Podcasts. I'm on Stitcher. I'm on SoundCloud. Have them go on one of those platforms and hit that subscribe button, man. Because I need to get more subscribers. Word is born, man. That's how, that's how cats get money, man. And I'm not saying that I'm going to take that money and buy a Bentley. You know what I mean? It's going to go to the show because I still need more equipment. I still need a venue. I still need a website. <laughs> I don't even have a website, yo. And I shouldn't be laughing at shit like that. But, yo, come through for me, man. Anyway, if you want to continue the discussion, you can go online. Um, and you could put hashtag where my killer tape at killer spell K-I-L-L-A. Um, if you want to book me for a workshop panel discussion, I do have an honorarium. Um, hit me up on the Gmail. It's Dan Trezomi, D-A-N-T-R-E-S is the Sam, O-M-I at Gmail. If you just want to say what's up, you can hit me up on the official, official Twitter podcast, official Twitter account for the podcast, which is going to be um, at Omi's podcast, O-M-I-S podcast. I am the Dan Trezomi. Also, if you just want to hit me up, my main Twitter account, which is lit, um, is at Dan Trezomi, D-A-N-T-R-E-S-O-M-I. Word is born. Thank y'all. I can't just say that enough. I love y'all. Word.